Oh, wait. We, we can cheat? We can cheat? Oh, no, 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 oh, cheated. Oh, huh, really? Ah, dang it. Well, let's see if you can cheat me now. Cheating is good. No, it's great. It's fantastic. That is, if you do it in this game for three to five, this party game called Cheating Moth, where cheating is allowed. So let's see what I can get away with as we go through this. I, I, uh, yeah, so do what I did there, but, uh, don't get caught. Yeah, this is, a uh, oh, cheating moth. Before we get to the cheating, you gotta know what you're cheating in. So here's a quick rundown. Everyone has a hand of cards, which they're trying to get rid of by playing cards to a central pile. You can put down a card that's one number higher or lower than the one currently there. So if it's a three, you can put down a two or four. Some cards will even do something when you play them, like this spider who lets you give a card from your hand to someone else. Now let's get back to the cheating because you want to get rid of your hand as fast as possible. So one player is actually going to be the guard bug. Who is the one keeping track on the cheating? If you cheat and the guard bug catches you, that cheating gets reversed. They give you a card from their hand and you become the new guard bug. But, 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 there are some rules on cheating. I know, kind of ironic, but it's here not to break the game. So the first rule is that your hand of cards must always be above the table. Then if someone else is caught cheating, well, you can't cheat while that matter is being resolved. And then you can never cheat out your last card in hand. You have to play it normally. And then the big, big, big one is that you can only cheat away one card at a time. And that's it. Just play one card every turn. Make sure that guard bug doesn't catch you cheating. Whoever gets rid of their cards first, wins the game. So now let's get to the review of this cheaty duel game, starting with the pros. So as for components, yeah, this game is literally just cards in a box. So let's talk about these cards. For a game all about sleight of hand and playing cards to a central discard pile, this card design is actually pretty good. When you play a card, yep, everyone can just easily see what the ability is. Yellow for spider, pink for mosquito, it's all easy to see. But the borders all being this thick black just really helps if you want to do some double card plays. That is, playing a card and then sneaking in another behind it. Or how about the back of cards, which is this really indiscriminate drab gray that tends to work really well to sneak into clothing and other various crooks and crannies. The game just has this great balance of the cards not being too small, that they're uncomfortable to hold, but small enough to fit under wallets, phones, palms, you name it. So far, what we've mentioned is the bare bone basics of the game, where you're just playing cards from your hand to sequence it in a pile. And that's fine, because the game wants you to focus on the cheating. And to facilitate that cheating, let's talk about these insect buddies. These guys are all going to cause a commotion when they're played to promote cheating. There's the tame ones, like the spider where you just give someone a card, or the ant where everyone just draws except for you. The two others are really going to cause some mayhem. When you see a mosquito, ah, mosquito, you want to slap it as fast as you can because whoever is the last one to do so gets a card from everyone else. Or the even more disgusting one, the cockroach, that you want to slap to kill with another card from your hand. These insects Wait, are mayhem can, can anyone, and use the wait, mayhem to on. cheat on the side. For, While everyone is slamming the central mosquito, use that sound to disguise a card drop to the floor or just be the first to slam a card for the cockroach and look, you hit another card underneath. And you can never say, oh, I don't want to cheat because then there's this card, the cheating moth itself, where the only way to get rid of it from your hand is to cheat. So you have to cheat in this game, you have to. But cheating needs someone to cheat, someone to sneak your cards past like a, like a central authority figure. And so this comes in through this guard bug role. If you're this guard bug, you can't actually cheat. So you have to catch other people cheating first and then you give them the guard bug role. 
So then the game is forcing you to keep tabs on cheating. This is just one central person that everyone is trying to cheat, making the cheating very directed. It is a very clear person to play around. You cheat them, you're doing well. Normal players are not allowed to rat on you, no stitching in this game. It's all up to the guard bug. But the guard bug is still playing the game and still has to manage their hand of cards and play all the mini drills that the insects ask for. So how much can they really watch? And this is what can be so tense and engaging about any moment, that there's always something to sneak past that one friend. And if you're that guard bug, that one friend, there's just so many troublemakers and only one pair of eyes. Okay, so now let's really delve into the cheating potential here, and it's huge in variety. Minus, of course, that you can only get rid of one card at a time. But this means that the game wants you to be incredibly creative, where the sky's the limit on how you can fool your friends. There's probably so many that we haven't even thought of, but here's some stuff we've seen and thought of in our games. Maybe you just want to wear really baggy clothes because you can stuff cards and sleeves or put them in your hoodie pocket or even in your hood. Maybe you want to stuff them in your jean pockets. And yes, cards can get damaged in this game. Or there's the social engineering. How about the classic fake a phone call, then sneak a card away while you take this so-called emergency call with your supposed third uncle? Or social engineering, start a giant argument for no reason. And then after this fake argument clears up, you say, oh, I forgot to play a card on my turn. It's my turn, right? Let me play a card. Even though you actually just played a card right before then, or you can just play an illegal card. Whether it's your own antics you can think of to distract others, or playing off of your friend's antics, or using the built-in cards as a distraction, there's so many windows to cheat in this game. And you just want to get inside your guard bug's head, because if they wrongly accuse you, they have to draw a card and they'll be now pretty reluctant to call you out again. So feel free to throw in plenty of jukes. Maybe you just move your hands around your body from time to time with some weird stretches. Because Cheating Moth just thrives in chaos and all the trickery you want to do, the game forces you to pay really close attention to your surroundings. Things that normally don't matter that much in board games like who you sit next to or how close you're sitting next to someone, the table size, the floor texture, these all actually matter in this game. It's kind of like a dexterity game influenced by sound, where you think about chairs, lighting, supposed accessories you're now putting on the table, etc, etc. You might not want to cheat as often if the guard bug is sitting right next to you, but hey, maybe if he's always so distracted by someone sitting across the table, you can cheat. You have to adapt each new environment you play Cheating Moth in. Perhaps a gaming area with hardwood floors makes it too obvious if you drop a card. Or if you're sitting on a park bench, it's really easy to put cards to the right of you. Or factor in that outside, the sound dynamics are different, so you can get away with louder card drops. Even the shape of a table matters, because that can give you different fields of vision on people, and if you're playing on a board game table like we have here, you can just easily hide cards in the cup holders. There's also plenty of things you can do to easily change your game for your preference, like adding in your own clothes underneath you if you're okay with them on the ground, or switching out your chair, or change how you're sitting to make yourself more primed to watch people. As you just keep adapting and adapting, the skill ceiling for this game is actually immense, as you factor in how there's sleight of hand, social engineering, and even perception of tells if you're this guard bug all for a game with very little rules. Now on to the cons of Cheating Moth. Now let's talk about an interesting big one, the cheating itself. There are four core rules that are mentioned. There are four core rules that are mentioned in this game on what the cheating is supposed to be like. But these four rules actually don't cover that much ground when you actually start playing the game, where you may find there's too many gray areas on what is the unallowed cheating for a game that constantly promotes creative cheating. A big one was, what is the time frame in which you can catch someone cheating? Is it before the next person plays a card from their hand? Can you internally debate whether or not to call them out on cheating and then pull the trigger based off of their body language post cheating? Plus, when they say you have to get rid of one card at a time, is there a time limit on how quickly you can chain the same cheat move? Like, I could get rid of a lot of cards in really fast succession from my hand, but hey, I drop them each individually 
right? Anyways, you gotta iron out at least some more for your group on what is or isn't cheating. Otherwise, these four rules are just a very, very bare bones. Now onto the nitpicks. To kick off, there needs to be something to help you explain these five special cards. Because yeah, they're simple enough that you'll get the hang of them after you play once, but newcomers will have no idea what they mean because I mean, look at that art. Look, this cute art is nice, but it doesn't really explain what they do or mean. We wish there was at least some player aid included so you can pass it around for newcomers. If you forget something or it's just your first game, you're forced to flip between these two pages in the rulebook. If you're the guard bug, then shoot. The moment you bring this thing up to read it and flip through pages, people are going to cheat like crazy. Next, there's actually some scoring rules that are brought up at the back of the rulebook, where you're supposed to play Cheating Moth over a series of rounds. After each round, you're supposed to tally up your negative points, so cards are given specific negative point values. If you win the round, then you have no negative points. But if someone over there has, say, four cards, that could be negative 23 or so. This does work to give incentive to players who have huge hands to just keep cheating to help their overall score. The issue is that it has the generic cards be negative 1 points, whereas a cheating moth is negative 10. That's an insane swing for a card that you can just top deck. Granted, yes, this imbalance is here to promote cheating, so yeah, that's why this is in the nitpicks. But in general, come on, counting up points after laughing about simple cheating feels misaligned, so we just had games end as soon as one round ended. Without these point scoring rules where you just play one round, the game tends to run under 15 minutes which is well under the projected 15 to 25 minutes. This shorter time length just seems to work better for such a lighthearted game that ultimately is just about cheating. The same idea of, well, just get better at cheating is here for the mosquito card, where if you lose, well, everyone gives you a card from their hand. In bigger player counts, like say five players, getting four extra cards is pretty rough to come back from we would have liked the mosquito card to allow the losing player to at least discard a card after everyone dumps one on them. And this discard would add more chaos to the game. Now it's time for the recommender score, where we try to critically evaluate the pros and cons, and Cheating Moth is gonna get a 7 out of 10. It's good. This is a game literally called Cheating Moth. So, cheating. Well, there's four rules on cheating in this game, and if you break those, well, that's actually cheating. So you can't go bananas with your sleight of hand. But the very concept of cheating outside of those four restrictions just makes this game such a breath of creative fresh air. And it's all about the cheating, whereas most games are all about the mechanics. By its very nature, yeah, this game is incredibly group reliant with its one trick pony theme. You just have to cheat, and there's essentially zero draw to this game otherwise. Whereas as even in bluffing games, you can get away with telling the truth. There's this insect, the cheating moth card, that you have to cheat. So let's just saying, cheat. You can do it, no, no, you must. You must cheat me. Cheat. And if you don't like this sleight of hand cheekiness, this game is not for you. And maybe the required stress means that you just want to watch instead. Or look at this, this can happen. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Uh... No, I just, uh... So are you guys gonna cheat, uh, or what? Just have to, uh, <laughs> uh, yep, if people are just too good at catching everyone's sleight of hand, or all scared, or all suck at cheating, then not much action happens. And that guard bug just has to be completely engaged 100% all the time, or else everyone just cheats without any consequence, and the game just ends. There's also the casual mindset we really, really, really want to stress here, where you should probably just focus on having fun types of cheats or just watching people get away with cheating. Because if you really try to win, well, you're probably not talking at all. And that's a weird state for a party game. The game asks for a lot of concentration, but doesn't promote any discussion through a certain card or a certain phase or even teamwork elements. Maybe all you hear is the occasional, oh, you cheated. There's not really that much room to talk in this game, besides, of course, pausing the game, and then debating about what types of cheating is legal, which is, it could be a fun minigame in of itself, but that's something you'll have to come up with. But who cares about talking if your group has a bunch of sneaky players 
that just can't stop laughing with all the ingenious plays you think of. The deaf is big with the cheating and utilizing as much as you can around you to secure it. The system also feels very familiar to people because it has so many similarities to Uno. And this makes it an accessible party game or a short experiment to litmus test new friends. It really is Uno where you win by cheating. When you look at sheer turns, there really isn't much. But this card dropping is not even close to the amount of magic this game has with all the interaction with your buddies as you just think about all these different levels of creativity and sneakiness. If you're all down for cheating, the laughing can begin even before anyone plays a card or makes a move because you're all just cracking up so hard that you can and you're supposed to cheat in this game. And while you're all cracking up, maybe you already stuck a card to the side. My personal score for Cheating Moth is gonna be a seven out of 10. I have a good time with it. I really, really, really like the cheating premise of this game. And few games have me interacting this closely with specific friends during a playthrough. And then there's just this mad rush you get when you cheat in a game and you get away with it. That's exciting. And then you wanna go again, you cheat. And then you get away with it. And there's just this ever present feeling of wanting to cheat or cheating and seeing people looking around the table. Will you get away with it? If you do, that's so, so exciting. And combine this with how, look, now there's a fun dexterity game. Everyone get distracted. Now you can cheat during that window. But then the parts between the cheating are sometimes not too fun. Like most of the time, I don't really like playing as the guard bug. It can just be too stressful when you actually don't catch anyone for a while and then you're freaking out, constantly second guessing yourself. I feel like such an idiot. Ah, these people are just getting away with things right under my nose. Or the stress of cheating is actually really scary for me in certain groups. So then I get unmotivated to cheat. Getting called out on cheating is really embarrassing sometimes, okay? And so I've just settled that Cheating Moth is actually the most group reliant short game I've ever played. And I can't play it too much. But then those moments, especially the earlier games with some groups are just so delightful and so troll that I just can't help but be delighted that I own such a novel game. So I don't really care about the talking so much because what this game does is fun enough. Cheating Moth, a hilarious but surprisingly pretty stressful game that I get burned out of pretty quickly. Maybe some replayability mechanics would be nice. But I just can't stop thinking about all these new methods on how to cheat, when to cheat, the speed of cheating, all these various methods just keeps this game on my radar. And it's so short that I never feel cheated out of my time. And it definitely doesn't make me feel like I'm cheating on my bigger, more beloved games. That was Cheating Moth. Let me know if you recommend any games that have cheating baked in. I know Munchkin and Cosmic Encounter are a thing. And purchase link for this guy is in the description below. Cheating Moth. As always, thank you to our patrons for making videos like this possible. We got Manuel G, Brian C, Clifford H, Aaron W, Max B, Bora, Jeremy M, C, Charlie P, Quentin S, Sam S, Travis R, Alba Y, Bob's K, Brian D, Jennifer L, Brett M, Matt G, Peter Z, Spinning Server 1, Brett, Ryan J, Brad G, Tiamo Peer, Mark A, James M, Evan B, Charles B Jr., Josh J, Baspar, Rado, Sophie, Reiner C, Colin L, Hunter T, Pierce B, Omar F, M Y, Ethan P, Bradley J, John C, Galvin V, Dark S, Andy C, XO Co, Alex L, Rob R, Sendo22, Dave F, and Josh R. We also got two Mad Lads cardboard. We got ZL and Jeff L. We also got that guy right there. We also got one Mad Lady cardboard. We got Amy. Our patrons down below if you want to support us. And I'll see you guys later. Remember to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And cheating mod. Let me know also if you have any cool ways of cheating in this game so I can use them on game night.